The Palestinian prisoners uh, in Israeli jails have been on hunger strike for the past 57 days. They've been going to their 58 days of hunger strike. These are the Palestinian uh, prisoners who are under administrative detention. Administrative detention is basically uh, the Israeli uh, authorities' uh, application. They keep a Palestinian prisoner for six months without any trial and without any uh, kind of convictions or having the right to see a lawyer. So uh, and these six months are also renewable. Some of the uh, Palestinian prisoners have been in jail for nine years uh, under these administrative detentions, six months after six months, after six months without going into any trial or being convicted in any, uh, on any uh, action. So uh, they decided, there are over 125 uh, of them, and they decided to go into hunger strike in order to end this uh, uh, policies. Uh, and uh, as you know, uh, there is over 5,000 Palestinian prisoners in Israeli regions. They go through daily uh, torture, daily uh, oppression under the Israeli occupation uh, and authority of the prisons. They strip them from their basic rights. Some of them are denied uh, visitations, uh, they are uh, denied uh, very uh, basic uh, rights. And not just that, uh, and lately we have also witnessed uh, an escalation against the Palestinian prisoners movement uh, at the hands of the Israeli occupation because they want uh, to crush the will of the Palestinian prisoners uh, since they are the, at the forefront of the Palestinian resistance. These are not just prisoners who are being there uh, because, uh, you know, uh, only because their uh, involvement in the struggle, but they are also leaders and student leaders, women leaders, labor uh, union leaders uh, in, uh, in Israeli regions. Israel never keeps its promise. Uh, the occupation, uh, they are constantly lying. Uh, in the media, they are constantly fabricating lies in the uh, media, and they never respected any uh, deal or any agreement. Uh, we know this because of experience of 66 years uh, resisting this uh, brutal racist occupation. So we know that they never keep promises. Yes, there was a hunger strike in which uh, uh, the entire Palestinian prisoners' uh, movement was involved in this hunger strike and the Israelis agreed to uh, some of the demands like the end of the isolation on about 20 Palestinian leaders who were kept in isolation uh, in solitary uh, So, But the rest of the uh, agreement, Israel never, uh, never uh, respected. Not just that, in the last 10 days, Israel have arrested over 300 from prisoners that initially were released. Uh, as a collective punishment. So they don't respect any of it. I mean, people are constantly, prisoners are constantly denied visitation from their families. Uh, Sometimes they punish an entire area and say, you know, like they did in Khalil uh, a week ago, they say the entire population of Khalil, uh, they cannot leave uh, uh, the country. Uh, we, they will not be guaranteed any permits. Uh, they will not visit their uh, sons uh, in prison uh, as a collective punishment. This is, uh, this is what occupation is about. It's not uh, just to force uh, their military presence, but to actually uh, oppress people and uh, um, constant duty of humiliating uh, the Palestinian people. Uh, the, the oppression is on minute by minute, second by second. As long as this occupation is there, there will be always uh, Palestinian suffering. And not just denied uh, visitation to their uh, relative sons, but also denied everything, denied their blood. First of all, uh, this is uh, an illegal court. It's illegal court. We do not recognize the legitimacy of the occupation or the legitimacy of its courts and its rulings. It's all illegal because it's an illegal occupation and we don't recognize any of their uh, laws uh, or uh, positions. Uh, 
yes, we are, uh, uh, you know, our people suffer under these laws, but these laws uh, doesn't mean that they are legitimate. The same applies on the case of uh, Comrade Ahmed Saadat, the General Secretary of the Popular Front uh, for the Liberation of Palestine. Comrade Ahmed Saadat has been sentenced 30 years in jail without any conviction or without any proof of anything. Uh, he was convicted because he was a political uh, court uh, and it's, uh, it's a political matter and he was sentenced to jail for 30 years because he is the general secretary of the popular fund, not because he has uh, the occupation has uh, uh, any kind of confessions from anyone or from him or uh, uh, even though they tried. Uh, for uh, days and weeks and uh, months to uh, prove uh, of any kind of uh, material uh, evidence in which they can convict him and they didn't find anything but regardless they sentenced him 30 years uh, in As you may remember uh, the uh, Ahmed Saadat and his comrades, uh, five of his comrades were arrested uh, or abducted if you will at the hands of the Palestinian Authority uh, in coordination with Israel and the United States. And that was in January 2002. He and his comrades, uh, they were placed in Jericho uh, prison. Uh, and on March uh, 15, 2006, the Israeli occupation forces, they abducted him again after destroying the prison and uh, killed two guards and injured uh, some of the prisoners. Uh, they arrested him and his uh, comrades and they were uh, placed uh, under uh, uh, very uh, heavy uh, interrogation period and uh, torture uh, that lasted for over two months. And then he was placed in uh, isolation until the last uh, understrike uh, on April, in which uh, he ended his suicide. Uh, uh, but uh, Comrade Ahmed Saadat, despite uh, all of the uh, harsh conditions he uh, placed him uh, in, he is uh, still uh, represent uh, the Palestinian uh, resistance and he is uh, Palestinian as well as he is a national leader who still play a role in, uh, in Palestinian politics. And he is in daily contact with the Palestinian uh, national liberation movement. He's not, uh, he's not far away from it. Palestinian uh, prisoners are being portrayed in the world as uh, a group of terrorists. And so the basic uh, struggle needs to be that these are Palestinian freedom fighters. These are Palestinian uh, strugglers. These are Palestinian uh, activists uh, who have been uh, sent to jail uh, because there is an occupation and because they resist this occupation. Uh, we need to clarify this sometime to uh, a lot of people because they are deceived by the media. Uh, the other thing is that in every national liberation movement, uh, prisoners have a, a high place in the people, uh, the conscious of the people. And the same goes on the Palestinian people. We look at our prisoners as our heroes and our leaders. We respect them and they have a very special uh, place in the Palestinian uh, collective conscious and mind. Uh, uh, even though uh, uh, this is a fact, uh, the uh, level of popular support uh, with the Palestinian prisoners nationally and in the Arab world and internationally has not been uh, like we would like to see. Because uh, the Palestinian people are facing very harsh conditions under occupation, so their participation not only uh, on the prisoners' issue but on various different issues have been uh, pushed away or declined. Uh, but lately, we have seen a growing movement in solidarity with Palestinian prisoners worldwide and in, uh, in Palestine. And really, 
the reason for that is the struggle of the prisoners themselves, because they are the one who are uh, confronting the occupation uh, second by second, minute by minute, and they are on the forefront of the Palestinian resistance. They are not asking for people to feel sorry for them, they are asking people to liberate themselves, because uh, these are uh, the hardcore Palestinian uh, uh, the cream of the crop, as uh, they say, of the Palestinian liberation. That so-called peace process is a lie. Uh, it's a big lie. Uh, it's uh, it's one of the big lies uh, that uh, they deceive uh, people and nation uh, when they and, and, and it's a U.S. Uh, orchestrated, uh, you know, process uh, along with Israel. They are the only two uh, sides that benefits from the so-called peace process. There is no peace process. Uh, what is there is basically, uh, a, if you will, a meetings that takes place between the Palestinian Authority and Israel uh, under the auspices of the United States. Uh, they like to portray this as a negotiation, but it is not. It is the Palestinian side that comes and reports to the Israeli government and to the U.S. government. These Palestinian leaders do not represent the Palestinian people. And there is a national consensus amongst Palestinians that these negotiations are harming us and they are not helping us because they are providing covers for the occupation to look uh, in one uh, to look in front of the, in the eyes of the world as they are peacemakers and on the ground they are practicing their dirty occupation racist uh, central uh, way. Uh, and so they are getting away with so many crimes that they are committing. And these crimes uh, we have been witnessing in the last 10 days. The Israelis have rounded up hundreds of Palestinians and killed uh, three Palestinians just in the last Yes, uh, it is uh, true, Comrade Ahmed said that uh, almost in every letter he writes and said uh, from prison, he urges Palestinians to be united. And he urges Palestinian political forces to be united. Because uh, this is the vision of the popular front uh, for the revolution in Palestine. The BFLP uh, uh, always pushed for Palestinian national unity. But uh, at the same time, uh, we want a national unity that is based on resistance and on confronting the Israeli occupation and stopping uh, negotiations. So uh, not just any unity, we want a unity that has meaning, that has substance, and that our people believe. That's why uh, what uh, you have been seeing lately is a half agreement or uh, very weak agreement between Fatih and Hamas. And this is not national unity. This is managing the crisis and managing the relationship between both sides, but it is not really national unity and it, will, uh, it is doomed to fail. The national unity that uh, Comrade Ahmad Saadat advocates for all the time is that a national unity that sees all Palestinians and not just see two factions or five factions or only political parties and that it is inclusive, a national unity in which all Palestinians participate and have an opinion about and not just 13 men goes into a room and discuss and come up with a paper. That's not national unity. So the PFLP have an understanding, a deeper understanding of what is national unity uh, means. We know that it is very important that we achieve that. It's a task that we will always fight for because we know that the minute Palestinians are united, the occupation will be living in the vision. In, uh, in principle, uh, political prisoners have rights. They have rights, which is a natural right, rights for any human people. And they have international rights as well. Uh, and by that, it's a universal right that any political prisoner 
should uh, uh, regardless of uh, you know uh, our position of the all political prisoners should be uh, released free no one should be in prison because of the uh, political uh, convictions and struggle uh, but at the same time we do see that the states uh, imperialist states and capitalist states have turned the prisons into a business and uh, so we see that in all prisons whether it's political prisoners or not all prison prisoners have been subjected to harsher uh, conditions because some of these companies are benefiting from building prisons uh, some of these companies are benefiting from cheap labor uh, that sometimes they, 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 uh, they use from prisoners and, 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 and uh, detainees. Uh, we see that in the United States, for example, they have the highest number of prisoners, something around a quarter of a million, if I'm not mistaken, of people in prison. From, you know, and, and there is companies that also invest in these kind of prisons. Like here in Greece, for example, there is a company called G4S that is uh, an, an international company that utilizes its technology uh, for the benefit of the occupation and for the benefit of prisons and prison builders. And so it is important to target also these companies and not just uh, and to say that you know these companies are complicit in these uh, uh, violation of uh, people rights so we are in solidarity uh, with them and we uh, think that the best way to do it is to fight back uh, and to uh, mobilize even inside prison because even inside prison you can have a voice and you can mobilize and organize and become a power there are various different ways that people can uh, participate in, uh, in, in solidarity with Palestinian prisoners. Uh, for example, we can provide information for people to even write letters for prisoners and uh, receive letters from prisoners. Uh, uh, you know, by intensifying people's participation in the boycott campaigns, like the boycott of G4S, the company I just mentioned, and to boycott these companies and say you are complicit in your uh, violation of uh, Palestinian prisoner rights and Palestinian people rights. Uh, by joining uh, an organization that advocates for uh, prisoners' rights in Palestine and elsewhere. Uh, by also educating people and the public about what is happening in the Palestinian uh, in, in Israeli jails and the crimes that Israel committed today against Palestinian prisoners. Uh, so there are so many different ways. It starts from writing a letter to occupying the Israeli embassy uh, here in, uh, in Athena and say that you cannot do this to the Palestinian prisoners. So, you know, uh, it is really important uh, not just to address the case of Ahmed Sa'adat, he always stresses on us that when uh, you are interviewed about uh, my campaign, talk about the prisoners and don't talk about me. So really the campaign to free Ahmed Sa'adat is an exit for us to educate people about prisoners and not just about uh, Ahmed Sa'adat. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>